Hello, it's Adam here from Music Radar, back again taking a look at another plugin. This time I'm looking at Catalyst from Toneworks. So Catalyst is a MIDI sequencing plugin. You can output MIDI from it, or you can also host your synths directly in Catalyst itself. This is what it looks like when you load it up, um, pretty plain. Um, you've got your various modules at the top here. Um, so at the moment I'm on the sequencer page, and you can see this flow diagram here is how it all connects together. Uh, there's also a harmonizer, which leads into the arpeggiator. Uh, and up top here is parameters, so that will control your synth parameters. Uh, and over here is where you load in your synth plugin. So I'm going to load in uh, something from Arturia. Let's have a look down here. Let's go for a nice little DX7, shall we? And we'll start over here on the uh, sequencer part. So the first thing you want to do is uh, set your key. Uh, it defaults to A minor. We'll stick with that for now. Um, you've got major and minor, and then all these other keys there, anything you could want. Uh, and then also this is just a swing for the rhythm. So this is going to be synced to my uh, DAW host tempo, uh, which at the moment is set on 121-ish. Uh, and when you play that back, it's going to play the sequence that's down here. Not doing much at the moment. What we can do here is change the pitch. Um, so now these aren't in semitones or tones, these are in steps of the scale that you set at the top. Um, so as you see, as you go through, it starts on A and then B, C, D, E, F, G. And then changing that, uh, changing the key is gonna change what note this is here. Um, so you can set up a whole sequence, have everything going, and you can change the key at any time and it will just switch that for you. So I'll just put in a few steps here. Um, as you change them, they become active and you can turn those on and off down the bottom there. Um, so let's just go for something completely uh, at random here. And you play that back. And that'll play back your sequence. Um, you've got the velocity you can change here as well. And also the gate time, um, which is basically making the notes shorter or longer. which actually on this patch isn't doing much because of just the way the synth is set up. And um, what you can do with the gate time is take it right to the top, uh, past 100, uh, and you see it says tie, uh, which means it will tie the notes together into the next step. Um, so if you're using a synth that's got a legato on it or kind of a, a drifting thing, um, that's useful to do there. What you can also do here, which I quite like, is uh, hitting this little dice button which will completely randomize um, whichever section you've clicked it on. So you can randomize the pitch, you can randomize the velocity, and you can randomize the gate time. So let's give that a go. And you can turn notes on and off down there, as I said, to get kind of rhythms going. Um, you've got things like rate, um, which controls obviously the speed it plays back. Um, set that to an eighth for now. And then in the direction, you've got forward, reverse, ping pong, uh, pong ping, which is quite obvious, obviously forwards and then backwards or backwards and then forwards. Uh, you've got random, which is just going to be completely random. And Brownian is a kind of type of random where it will play one note and then there's a 50-50 chance whether it will go backwards or forwards, um, which gives it kind of an interesting flow. You can see them pinging around at the bottom there. So that's the basics of the sequencer. Um, you can have up to five different patterns in here, which you can switch between. Um, you can also add in steps to make longer sequences. Um, you can add in kind of odd numbered steps to get some weird polyrhythms going. Um, but for now, let's set it to eight steps and keep that there. What I'm gonna do is uh, just switch that forward and then switch over to the harmonizer module. So uh, you can turn that on here and it becomes active in the top. And what you've got here is a series of chords that it's gonna choose from. So with its default setup, you're seeing the chords down here from the scale, and then these orange notes are the ones it's gonna play when it hits that note from the sequencer. Uh, there's various different options here. Um, you can have uh, normal close chords, you can have kind of drop notes where the, uh, the lower notes are dropped down. Density is controlling how many uh, notes are within that chord. Um, so knocking that right down, you're getting two notes per kind of chord hit there. Knocking it right up, you're gonna get some massive chords. which sounds pretty chaotic a lot of the time. Let's switch it back down to just one, so we're getting a three note chord.
you've got this voicing uh, slider here, which inverts the chord. Uh, if you know anything about music theory, that's basically taking the lower note and pushing it up an octave, and then taking the bottom two notes and pushing those up an octave. Uh, and you can also add the sixth, seventh, or ninth note in there. Um, so let's go for some weird ninth chords uh, and see what that sounds like. Again, coming over here, you've got a randomize function, um, which will randomize all the settings of the chord there. Which is great if your music theory isn't super hot or you're just lacking a bit of inspiration that day. Uh, I really like the randomize feature for that. So you've got these chords there, you can keep that as it is, or you can feed those into the arpeggiator, which again has uh, loads of different options there. So here you've got similar options, um, chord memory, uh, which is going to be the last played chord. You've got a repeat on and off, which repeats uh, each note in the arpeggiator. Again, you can set the uh, rate here, and then direction, uh, you've got the same options as before. And then again, you've got your steps. So I'm going to go back to my sequencer and just make this a little bit more simple um, so we can hear the full effect of the arpeggiator. So now it's hitting these uh, two notes, F and then F sharp in the... Uh, sequencer it's plugging those into the harmonizer and you can see these notes light up as it does that so it's playing the second chord and then the third chord in that scale there which is an f diminished and then an f sharp major and we set both of those to ninth chords so quite quickly, you can do some pretty complicated music theory things. You know, you're always going to be in the right key and playing the right notes because you've got that set at the top and it's never going to go out of that. The final module you can do up here is the parameters. And at the moment, I can turn that on and it's not mapped to anything. So what we need to do is click that and then uh, choose which parameter of your synth plugin you want to be uh, changing with this. So you might have to do a little bit of digging through here because it's going to list all the parameters of your synth. Uh, and I'm using DX7, which is fairly complicated. Um, but what we're going to do is choose a filter cutoff on operator 1. And then this is going to run through this sequence and that's going to uh, affect that as it goes along. Again, similar options. You've got rates, uh, direction, and you can change the number of steps there. So let's check that to uh, an 8-step sequence and kind of do a little uh, kind of curve like this. Again, you can randomize that. And these steps uh, aren't linked together for each module, so they're completely independent. So you can have a much longer uh, range of steps here. So I've very quickly gone from uh, nothing there and not programming any MIDI in or playing anything uh, to quite a complex sequence. We've got three different lanes of parameter automation there. So all of that combined together can make for some really interesting results. Now Catalyst doesn't come with a whole load of uh, presets in there. Uh, it does come with a few kind of demo files, which I'll load up now. Um, so if I go into demo, and then I've got um, some for Arturia pigments here, which I do have installed. Uh, and I'll tune to this Dorian art uh, preset here and open that up. So that's going to load in uh, all of the uh, sequencer parameters. Nothing too complicated going on there. It's going to load in the harmonizer, which is on for this one. And it's got an arpeggiator here. So you can see that going up the steps and then going back down. And also with this one, it's got uh, some parameters loaded in already. And with that file that I've loaded within Catalyst, it also has all the settings for pigments, which it's loaded in there, as you can see. Uh, so let's go back to the sequencer and I'll just press play and see what this little demo is doing.
so yeah that's a much nicer sounding demo than the one i did uh, of all the modules working together so you've got your sequencer triggering three different notes three different steps in the sequence uh, you've got your harmonizer adding in some chords which are being fed into the arpeggiator and then the arpeggiator is going up and then down again in this 16th note uh, step pattern and there's also a bit of modulation on the cutoff just there so yeah, that is Catalyst by Toneworks. A uh, really nice little plugin, super easy to use. Uh, if you're used to working in those kind of sequencer ways anyway that your DAW doesn't really have, uh, if you don't like fiddling around with lots of MIDI, give it a try. Or if you're just looking for a bit of, or if you're just looking for a bit of inspiration, or you want to play around with some more high-level music theory stuff that wouldn't necessarily come naturally just sat at the keyboard, then uh, yeah, give it a go. You can download a free demo from the Toneworks website, and it's available now.